These are all native uh, butterflies, and they are all indigenous to this area. So each year, these butterflies are raised from uh, eggs to caterpillar to chrysalis to the butterfly adults that you see flying inside the habitat here. Uh, a lot of these are transient butterflies, so they don't come up until certain times out of the year. So we have to wait until they come up into our area, and outside we provide host plants, which the females will lay their eggs on, and then we will start the uh, farming process of raising the butterflies. As you saw in our house, we have mating pairs, so male-female will mate, and uh, that, that fertilizes the female, and now she will go out and seek out her host plant, which is the plant that her caterpillar will eat. So then the female lays her egg on the plant. The egg will hatch within usually three to five days. The caterpillar emerges as a teeny, teeny little caterpillar, and it starts to eat the plant. And then it goes through about four to five growth cycles that, uh, that we, we call them instar cycles. And that's when the caterpillar will shed its, its skin and grow a bigger skin so it can get bigger. At the end of these five cycles, the, ca the caterpillar will then produce its chrysalis. The chrysalis is, is also known as a pupa. So inside that chrysalis, now what was once the caterpillar is going to reassemble itself as the butterfly. They're really not communal as we know, um, but if you were to sit here in the house and watch the way that they frolic and kind of, you know, do their thing, you'd, you'd wonder if they were being playful. <laughs> Back in the 2000s, we had visited a couple butterfly houses in Key West, in Massachusetts, things like that, and we were intrigued at the whole process of, of, of having butterflies in an enclosure and presenting them to, to, the, to the public. As we were kind of doing our research and due diligence, we started to read a lot about the problems with butterflies and how a lot of our native butterflies are disappearing. And there's a lot of issues with, as we talked about earlier, pesticides and herbicides and things. So then we decided that we would do a native house because we wanted to basically give people information about butterflies that they could take with them and, and use, hopefully, to help butterflies and pollinators. Because we love tropical houses and we, we love to visit them, but we don't feel people take anything away from it that they can really use in their own, in, in their own homes or their own backyards. But if you come to a native house, these are your butterflies. These are the butterflies that you're going to find in, in your backyard. So we feel that, that this is, can be a little bit educational, and, and people can take away some information that will help. So that's kind of why we did it. We emphasize what people can do in their own backyards. That's really what it comes down to. We don't really have control as much as to what goes on in, in agriculture and things like that. So if everybody makes an effort to create a backyard that is is friendly to butterflies and pollinators then that's going to help out tremendously they have to have a clean environment that that's very important um, toxicity of any type is going to weaken them or eventually uh, cause them to to die an immature death um, I mean, we see or know from reading a lot online and stuff and talking to other people in the scientific fields that a lot of the butterflies aren't doing well in our agricultural areas and things across the United States. Uh, we're, we're using a lot of uh, herbicides and pesticides that, that are very toxic to, to butterflies. Hummingbirds, bees, butterflies, and other types of insects are, are our pollinators, and they're very important as far as pollinating our plants and our crops and all those type of things. If we continue to give them toxic situations, we're going to lose them.